안녕하십니까? 온라인 서절의 김경원입니다. Greetings. I'm Dr. Kim k y o n g w o n of Online Surgery. Let me show you a surgical case today. The patient is 67-year-old female patient, and in the lower right posterior area, there's gingival swelling and pain. Number 45 and 46, there's periapical lesion, and in number 46, the mesial root is fractured. The plan was to extract number 45 and 46. Because the alveolar bone destruction was significant, AOS collagen was to be used for socket preservation. Four months or later, one guide will be used to place implants in number 45 and 46. If you look at the CT at initial visit in number 45, along with apical lesion, you can see that the buccal bone is completely resorbed. There's only a little bit of lingual bone left. In the case of number 46, there's a bit of lingual bone, but buccal bone is entirely gone. As mentioned, because of root fracture in number 46, the periapical lesion was exacerbated and the buccal wall was entirely destroyed. Socket preservation was planned. In the area where teeth is, the root is actually exposed. There was a root fracture leading to complete buccal wall destruction. AOS, a collagen membrane from Austin, was used to do socket preservation. On top, collagen membrane os guide was used and suture was done. As you can see, after extraction, there is granulation tissue and fractured root. As shown, AOS collagen was used. It was irrigated first before being used for socket preservation. This is right after surgery. This is one month and a half, and this is about 3.5 months later. If you look at the CT, at 3.5 months, the surgery was prepared. In number 45, there is slight bone left in buccal side, but it was almost entirely resorbed. Number 46 now. AOS collagen was used, and you can see that the form is being maintained, but it's difficult to say that new bone formation has occurred completely. The plan was formed after consulting with one guided team in number 45 KS3BA 4.5 by 10 mm and in number 46 KS3BA 5.0 by 10 mm implants were planned. The reason why we plan for 10 mm instead of 8.5 is because we did socket preservation and I wanted the implants to be in contact with the host bone. 10 mm implants were planned because there was distance with the inferior alveolar nerve. In number 45, KS3 4.5 by 10 mm, and in number 46, KS3 BA surface 5.0 by 10 mm implants were planned. As shown, implants will be placed. As shown on the CT, buccal bone is not fully consolidated. Therefore, one guide will be used to place the implants. And after that, on top of it, AOS graft or bovine bone graft will be done. This is immediate post-op image. One guide was used and implants were placed as planned. If you look over here on top of the implant, the bone grafts can be observed. At the time of implant placement, ISQ was in number 45, 73, 72, and in number 46, it was 69 and 70. It was quite favorable, but additional GBR was planned. Cover screw was used and primary closure was done. Immediate post-op in number 45, on the buccal side as well as on top of the implant, additional bone graft was done, and in number 46, additional bone graft was done to enhance the buccal wall. As we did surgery, we biopsied the area where AOS collagen was grafted. As you can see in the biopsy, new bone formation is observed around the graft material. 
This is after four months uh, since AOS collagen was used, and new bone formation can be observed. If I had waited six months, more new bone would have been generated. You can see that this is being progressed in a favorable manner. At initial visit, the patient had periapical lesion, and in January, socket preservation was done using AOS collagen. In May, after four months, implants were placed and second surgery was done about two months later implant placement. Healing abutments were connected and impression was taken. At the time of second surgery on CT, in number 45, you can see that the bone is not fully consolidated but favorable buccal wall can be observed. The ISQ was about 79 because BA surface was used. In the area where socket preservation was done after two months, favorable ISQ value was achieved. In number 46, uh, the buccal bone is not fully consolidated as well, but on CT, it is well maintained. The ISQ value was 83 and 82, so it was quite favorable. Prosthesis were planned in pre-op image in number 45 and 46. Because there was periapical lesion as shown on the CT, the buccal wall was entirely destroyed. AS collagen, the new collagenated bone from Austin was used. In the area where buccal wall was lost, a socket preservation was done. After four months, implants were placed. The A surface was chosen. After two months, ISQ values were favorable. After that impression was taken and prosthesis were delivered. Let's look at the surgical clip. You can see that within the patient's mouth, the one guide template is being adapted. The one guide fits quite nicely. I confirmed it. Because I was planning for GBR, incision was made on the buccal side, minor periosteal elevation was done to reflect the flap slightly, and surgery was performed. As shown without using tissue punch, because I plan for GBR, flat was reflected just so that the drill can go in. Guide plate was adapted. I confirmed that guide plate was positioned. Trafine drill was used for biopsy to get the bone graft. I wanted to see how much bone was formed using the socket preservation using AOS. Because implants were to be placed, a de-flattening drill was used to flatten the superior portion. Flattening drill was done. In number 45, initial drilling was done. In order to prevent excessive heat generated on the bone, pumping action was done. 3.5 by 10 millimeter one guide drill is used. Drilling was done. I am making sure that pumping action is done to minimize heat generation as I did initial drilling. Depth gauge was used. Because this is a site where socket preservation was done, I'm going to check. I used a 4.01 guided drill first, a 4.0 by 10 millimeter. I could have skipped to 4.5, but I did undersized drilling because of the bone graft. The final drill was 4.5 by 10 millimeter one guide drill. Final preparation was done. The bone quality was suspected to be 
not so good. So I did not draw full length with 4.5 because it is be a surface. So I irrigated the implant sufficiently before placing it. As it is being irrigated, 4.5 by 10 millimeter implant was placed. Because this is an area where socket preservation was done, the final drill 4.5 by 10 millimeter was not used to full length. The initial stability was good. Under drilling was done. You can see that initial torque value is over 30 newtons. The hex position and the position is checked in number 46. Flattening drill is used first and I evened the bone that is uneven in the superior portion. Initial drilling is done. The white type that is in gold. Full length of drilling is done. 3.5 by 10 millimeter one guide wide ball type was used to do drilling. Instead of going straight to 5.0, I used a 4.5 by 10 millimeter one guide drill first. After that, 5.0 by 10 millimeter one guide drill was used. In order to prep the apex area, I drilled full length here. Full length drilling was done using 5.0 by 10 millimeter one guide drill because it is BA surface. The cell line irrigation was sufficiently done before placing the implant. As it is being irrigated, the implant is placed about 80% with engine and after that hand wrench is used. To get the final position of the implant, initial torque is over 30 newtons. Slot is used to control the hex position as well as the depths. Smart peg is connected to measure ISQ value in number 45. It's about 73.72 and in number 46, it is about 69.70. Because under drilling was done in number 45, the ISQ value was higher, cover screw was connected. If you look over here on the buckle side, thread exposure can be observed. The AOS was used to do additional GBR. Bone graft was performed as shown. On top of implant and on buckle side, Bone graft was done additionally, periosteal releasing was done, and suture was done. In order to get primary closure on the buckle side because additional bone graft was done, I'm doing this to get good primary closure. I'm adding more bone graft on the buckle side. OS guide was used to cover the GBR site. Because I used large oscida, I used two layers. Suture was done. Using the mesial tooth number four, anchor suture was done to prevent the flap tearing. I'm using the mesial tooth and anchor suture to position the flap and do suture. I think this suture is most important. You can see that the flap is tension free.
This was the surgical clip of the day as mentioned. The existing number 45 and 46, especially in number 46, there was mesial root fracture and alveolar bone destruction occurred significantly and there was entire buccal bone destruction. AOS collagen was used for socket preservation and four months thereafter implants were placed. As implants were placed, additional buccal bone graft was done and Two months later, at second surgery, because ISQ values were favorable, prosthesis were delivered. Thank you for watching.